Hello, welcome to Level Change by Claudio Fonseca. I'm a real world 777 pilot, and today we are going to talk about the pre flight procedure, the pre flight procedure related to the first officer. Next video, you will have the pre flight procedure for the captain. So, if the first officer did the exterior inspection, usually when the first officer comes back, the captain is finishing the CDU, and then the first officer starts the pre flight and later on. Uh, checks the CDU. If the first officer is the pilot flying and some companies they request uh, the pilot flying to fill the CDU, so after filling the CDU then the first officer is going to start the pre-flight procedure. A couple of things that I want to discuss uh, with you before we start the procedure itself is first you can find on the video description a link for the document that I show you now which is the description of the pre-flight for the first officer. Okay, We have here five pages that is going to describe all the pre-flight procedure for the first officer. Second thing that I want to discuss is that uh, any time on this procedure I tell you that you have to check a specific light. If that specific light is not on, I'm going to turn on the light test. So you are going to see all lights on so you can proper identify the light that I'm talking about. And I'm going to keep this for just one or two seconds so you can identify the light itself. I'm going to be with my mouse around. So, for example, if I'm talking about the cabin utility off light, I'm going to show the off light like this. And later on, I'm going to uh, take the light test off. So you are going to check the status of that light. In that case, it is off. And that's what we are going to check. OK, so uh, we are going to start like this. So for today as we are talking about the first officer procedure I'm going to explain you the pre-flight procedure by the first officer and I'm going to have my automated voice together with me once I have something to say something to comment you will notice that I will stop the automated voice we are going to discuss that system a little bit uh, but for you to have an idea the pre-flight procedure for the first officer and for the captain consists of checking all the system of the airplane and make sure that the airplane is satisfactory uh, for the flight okay so let's start the procedure then pre-flight procedure first officer broadband system if installed set broadband com Guard closed. Thrust asymmetry compensation switch. Auto. Verify that the off light is extinguished. Primary flight computers disconnect switch. Guard closed. Verify that the disconnect light is extinguished. Electrical panel. Set. Battery switch. On. Verify that the off light is extinguished. IFE and passenger seat switch. On. Verify that the off light is extinguished. Cabin and utility switch. On. Verify that the off light is extinguished. APU generator switch. On. Verify that the off light is extinguished. Bus tie switches. Auto. Verify that the isolation lights are extinguished. Generator control switches. On. Verify that the off lights are illuminated. Verify that the drive lights are illuminated. Backup generator switches. On. Verify that the off lights are illuminated. APU selector, as needed. Start, then on. Verify that the fault light is extinguished. Okay, so here I want to stop a little bit and then I want to talk to you about the APU, okay? Uh, because the procedure says APU as needed is start then on. Basically, uh, the pre-flight procedure is telling you when you need to start the APU, you need to take the APU switch to start and then release it to on. It's not telling you to do it now. In this case, we still have our 
primary and secondary external power connected, the APU is going to stay off, okay? So remember, that is something pending from the pre-flight procedure, and that's the way it is supposed to be, okay? At some point, if the APU is working, you will have to turn on the APU, okay? The system doesn't tell you to do it now, that's why when you read the procedure, it says as needed, okay? And of course, this covers uh, the procedure uh, if you do not have the APU working as well, okay? So, let's continue. Camera light switch, if installed, off. Caution, do not operate the wipers on dry windows to avoid windshield scratches. Left wiper selector, off. Voice recorder, auto. Emergency light switch, guard closed. Service interphone switch, off. Caution, do not push the passenger oxygen switch. The switch causes deployment of the passenger oxygen masks. Verify that the passenger oxygen on light is extinguished. Window heat switches. On. Verify that the inoperative lights are extinguished. Warning, do not push the ram air turbine switch. The switch causes deployment of the ram air turbine. Verify that the ram air turbine unlocked light is extinguished. Hydraulic panel. Set. Left and right engine primary pump switches. On. Verify that the fault lights are illuminated. Center 1 and Center 2 electric primary pump switches. Off. Verify that the fault lights are illuminated. Demand pump selectors. Off. Verify that the fault lights are illuminated. Passenger signs panel. Set. No smoking selector, if installed. On. No electronic selector, if installed. Off. Seat belt selector. Off. Okay, here we are going to talk a little bit again, okay? In this airplane, we only have the passenger signs for the seat belts, and in this case, you keep it, it off. Basically, if you have the no electronics selector that comes on the left side, you are going to keep it off as well. You can think about the le no electronics just as the passenger uh, seat belt signs, okay? Basically, once you need them, uh, the seat belts on, you put uh, the no electronics also to on. When you want the seat belts to off, you put the no electronics to off. And also, if you are going to keep the seat belts in auto, you can keep the no electronics in auto as well okay so it's uh actually this procedure changes from company to company but i think the easiest way for you to simulate is to use as you were using uh the seat belt signs uh the opposite is for not the opposite but quite different is the no smoking signs. so the no smoking signs if you have the no smoking signs you keep the no smoking signs always on okay you make sure that it's on now during the pre-flight procedure and you keep it on your whole flight. Lighting panel. Set. Overhead panel light control. Mid position. CB panel light control. As needed. Dome light control. As needed. Storm light switch. As needed. Master bright switch. On. Master bright control. As needed. Glare shield panel light control. Mid position. Glare shield flood light control. As needed. Landing light switches. Off. APU fire panel. Set. Verify that the APU bottle discharge light is extinguished. APU fire switch. In. Verify that the APU fire warning light is extinguished. Cargo fire panel. Set. Cargo fire arm switches. Off. Verify that the forward and aft fire warning lights are extinguished. Cargo fire discharge switch. Off. Verify that the discharge light is extinguished. Okay, let's talk about the 
fire panels a little bit okay and i'm going to talk about the cargo fire the apu fire panel and this also applies to the engine fire panel okay so uh, by boeing you do not have to do any test for the fire uh, detector system okay so you only check that the system is at the right position the switches they are at the right position okay uh, some companies and this is very specific they ask for the first officer to do the fire and overheat test during the pre-flight procedure remember this is not by Boeing this is an extra task for uh, the pilots uh, why Boeing says you do not have to do it because if something goes wrong okay uh, if you have any kind of fa uh, failure on this uh, fire and overheat detection system you are going to see a status message here on your MFD okay once you open the status page you are going to see a status message if you are on the ground anytime that you are not on this page and you have a message a status message you are going to see that the status message queue uh, shows up here and then you can open the status message and check okay so it's not necessary however if you want to do the test itself it's a little bit complicated to show you here on the sim because what I have to do I have to come all the way here and show you uh, the bottom itself and also uh, the top part of our acres okay because once you press the system you are going to see that you have the fire test in progress showing here okay and then if you keep pressing this button okay you are going to see fire test pass okay so in the real airplane if you just press nothing is going to happen okay you need to keep pressing this button and then once you keep pressing this button you keep pressing until you have the message fire test pass or fire test test fail if you have a problem in the system that shows fail you will get a status message here anyway that's why Boeing is telling you you do not have to do it okay understood so that is uh, the fire overheat test and it works for the APU the cargo fire the wheel well and also here the engines okay so all the tests you do uh, through the bottom that is here on the overhead panel and it's not necessary uh, for the first officer to do according to the Boeing standard procedures okay let's continue engine panel set EEC mode switches normal verify that the alternate light is extinguished start selectors normal Auto start switch on. Verify that the off light is extinguished. Fuel jettison panel set. Fuel jettison nozzle switches off. Verify that the valve lights are extinguished. Fuel to remain selector in. Fuel jettison arm switch off. Verify that the fault light is extinguished. Fuel panel set. Cross feed switches off. Verify that the valve lights are extinguished. Fuel pump switches off. Verify that the left forward pump pressure light is extinguished if the APU is on, or is illuminated if the APU is off. Verify that the left aft pump and the right forward and aft pumps pressure lights are illuminated. Verify that the center pumps pressure lights are extinguished okay so here we are going to talk again as we have the APU off the four main pump sorry the four main tank pumps they will have the pressure light on okay because there is no pressure in this line if the APU was on even with the switch off 
this pressure light needs to be extinguished because this pump operates automatically when the APU is on, okay? So you do not have to turn on it turns on automatically so the switch stays in the off position but you are not going to see the pressure uh, light uh, for this pump the left forward pump in case the APU is on and that's something you have to check on your pre-flight procedure for the center pumps the pressure lights they are inhibited when the pumps are off okay so the center pump pressure light only works if the center pump switches they are on that's why in this case even though there is no pressure from the center pumps uh, the pressure lights they are off okay so that's how uh, the system works for uh, the fuel panel anti-ice panel set wing anti-ice selector auto engine anti-ice selectors auto lighting panel set beacon light switch off navigation light switch on logo light switch as needed wing light switch off indication light switch as needed runway turn off light switches off taxi light switch off strobe light switch off air conditioning panel set equip cooling switch auto verify that the overhide light is extinguished gasper switch on recirculation fan switches on okay here we are going to talk about the recirculation fan switches if you are following this virtual ground course from the beginning uh, you notice that one of the first videos was about exterior air conditioning okay if you have an exterior air conditioning machine and that's what we have now so we apply uh, the ground conditioner air supplementary procedure and as i told you on that video the ground um, external air conditioning supplementary procedure it supersedes all the normal procedures related to the air conditioning okay so that procedure tell us that in case we want to increase the external air conditioning efficiency we need to keep the recirculation fan switches to off okay uh, is not mandatory but is to increase the efficiency okay so if the air conditioning uh, external air conditioning is not connected at this stage you need to make sure that the recirculation fans they are on okay but as today we do have an external air conditioning connected they stay off if you follow later on the supplementary procedure to disconnect the external air conditioning the supplementary procedure will remind you to turn on the recirculation fan switches okay even if you forget about it you have to remember that just like the APU is still off the recirculation fan switches they are also off in this case due to the uh, ground air conditioning connected to the airplane right now flight deck temperature control mid auto position cabin temperature control mid position pack switches auto verify that the off lights are extinguished if the APU is on or is illuminated if the APU is off okay let's stop here a little bit again so first it tells us that the pack switches they need to be on and right now they are off one more time this is because external ground air conditioning is connected to the airplane and that supplementary procedure that supersedes all the procedures including the preliminary uh, in, sorry including the pre-flight procedure that we are talking about now it asks us to keep the packs off and this is mandatory because if you keep packs on with external air conditioning you may damage the pack and the pack components okay so in this case what you want is 
the pack switches off because the external air conditioning is still connected. Remember, one more time, once you disconnect the external air uh, conditioning, that supplementary procedure will tell you to turn the pack switches back to on, okay? But that's something to remember. As well, the APU, recirculation fans, and also the packs, they are off, so you do not have your pre-flight procedure completely uh, correct, okay? But that's the way it is, okay? In this case, you need to keep it off. If the APU was on and the packs were on, you will see that the off lights would be extinguished, okay? So, for these off lights to be extinguished, you need to have two situations. APU or engines running and the pack switches on, okay? Because basically now the pack, uh, sorry, the off lights for the pack, they are off because the packs are off, okay? But even if we turn on the pack switches, because the APU is still off, the engines are still off, the off light will not extinguish, okay? So, uh, in a normal day or let's say in a day that you are using your APU as electric power and also as bleed source for your air conditioning packs in that case then you are going to have the packs on and the packs of light extinguished okay so this is slightly different from the procedure one more time because we are applying uh, the ground condition air uh, supplementary procedure Trim air switches. On. Verify that the fault lights are extinguished. Bleed air panel. Set. Left, center and right isolation switches. Auto. Verify that the closed lights are extinguished. Engine bleed switches. On. Verify that the off lights are illuminated. APU bleed switch. Auto. Verify that the off light is extinguished. Pressurization panel. Set. Outflow valve switches. Auto. Verify that the manual lights are extinguished. Landing altitude selector. In. Caution do not operate the wipers on dry windows to avoid windshield scratches. Right wiper selector. Off. Right flight director switch. On. Display select panel. Set. Lower center display switch. Push. EFIS control panel. Set. Minimums reference selector. As needed. Minimum selector. As needed. Flight path vector switch. As needed. Meters switch. As needed. Barometric reference selector. As needed. Barometric selector. Set local altimeter setting. VOR and ADF switches. As needed. Navigation display mode selector. Map. Navigation display center switch. As needed. Navigation display range selector. As needed. Navigation display traffic switch. On. Weather radar switch. Off. Verify that the weather radar indications are not shown on the ND. Map switches. As needed. Okay guys, here we are going to stop a little bit again. Because I want to talk about all these selections that uh, the system or the procedure says as needed. Okay, so basically uh, the FPV is up to the pilots to work it and to use it or not uh, the meters usually they stay off you only turn them on once you are flying in a region where uh, meters are used instead of feet and basically i can tell you that you use this over china okay so when you are approaching china or when you are within china you turn on the meters you're going to see the meters indication on your altimeter as well okay another thing about the vor and adf switches some airplanes they do not have the adf switches so you always keep them on vor and usually you keep them on vor or anyway okay you only 
take them to the ADF if you are going to set and use an ADF during your uh, departure uh, route or flight okay uh, because the ADFs they do not auto-tune by the FMC the VORs they do so you keep them on VOR you're going to see uh, which VORs are being auto-tuned by the FMC and the VOR positions, okay? Uh, for the ADF, you do not have this feature, so you have to take them uh, to ADF and go to the FMC and select the ADFs as you want, okay? The NDBs as you need. Uh, very important make sure that the traffic is on so you have the indication TCAS off if the traffic is on okay so if the traffic is off you will have you will not have the indication uh, for the TCAS off also when you turn on the traffic if the weather radar and the terrain are off you are also going to see uh, the arc the range arc rings the range rings if your airplane has this feature okay uh, but this is not what you are looking uh, to make sure the traffic is on okay what you want to look is the tickets off indication because even if the traffic is off like it is now but the terrain is on you are going to see uh, the range rings as well okay uh, the other thing the other uh, system that turns on the range rings is the weather radar okay so uh, I'm going to ignore this. So, are uh, the is the weather radar? So now the weather radar is on, and one thing on this procedure, you want to make sure that the weather radar is off. Okay, so you do not want to see weather, weather plus turbulence. You do not want to see anything related to your weather radar here. Okay, so if you still have the weather radar, you take off okay uh, so it's important to look for the TCAS off and the weather radar indications because if you turn on the traffic okay you may not notice that the weather radar is, is still on okay it's because that's the indication that the weather radar is on and that's the indication that the traffic uh, switch is also on so basically what you want is only the tickets off here okay uh, and usually i fly with the airport switches on so i can see uh, the airports around me like in this case sierra bravo sierra juliet san jose dos campos uh, to the uh, east of Sao Paulo okay so I do not use stations I do not use waypoints I do not use data and I do not use position when I don't need okay of course if I want to check for a specific uh, VOR I can turn on the stations if I want to check for a specific waypoint I do the same for the waypoints if I'm confused about any data uh, related to altitude related to uh, time that I'm going to cross the specific point I can also turn on uh, them but usually I think it's too much on my screen so I keep them off I just take them on when I need okay so this is how usually I set up uh, my panel okay uh, so in my case I keep a flight path vector off meters off um, I'm going to say another thing about the flight path vector. Flight path vector, uh, it can help you a lot to manually fly without flight directors. But if you have flight directors, uh, I think the flight path vector uh, can, can include an extra thing on your primary flight display that can uh, take your attention out of the flight director so I'd rather stay with the flight directors only if I'm turning off flight directors yes then I turn on uh, the flight path vector and remember uh, the flight path vector is not reliable in case you have uh, altitude and or airspeed and reliable okay so in that case turning on the flight packed vector may not help you okay uh, so that's why i keep it, it off i do not see any reason to turn them on uh, unless you want to check a very specific thing and then uh, usually i do the same as the navigation uh, switches I turn it on when I need when I don't need I turn it off again the meters as I told you China only in China and 
and that's it. Uh, usually I depart also with the lowest range. I think that's the best. Uh, even uh, Boeing recommends you to do it. And once uh, you are flying, there are specific ranges for you to use on your departure, on your cruise. And we are going to talk about it as we proceed with this course. Okay, so usually at this stage, what you want to see is map, lowest range. But of course, when you are checking your FMC, when you are checking the route, if you want to go to the plan, Yes, go ahead, use the plan so you can check all your FMC and even uh, the range as you need it, okay? Once you finish checking your FMC, if that's the case, remember and go back to map and to the lowest range so you will have the correct setting for your departure, okay? So let's continue the procedure then. Oxygen. Test and set. Okay, so here we go to the oxygen uh, mask. The oxygen mask is not fully simulated on the PMDG, okay? So you can do only the initial test of this oxygen mask, which is basically uh, press and hold the test switch. And even when you are holding and the mask is in the 100% position, you are going to see that the yellow star it shows and it disappears and that's the way it is supposed to be okay so you press you hold it shows it disappears okay and then once you release it stays uh not in view okay uh then there are more tests that you do on the real airplane you take this selector as you can see there is an arrow here right now is in a hundred percent that's the way it's supposed to be but you rotate this to emergency so once you are in emergency and then you do the same test this yellow uh, indication needs to stay there okay it cannot disappear like this so we do the first test in 100 percent we make sure it shows and disappear then we do the second test in emergency we make sure it does not disappear and then you bring it back to the 100 uh, percent position okay so that's the oxygen uh, mask test okay uh, but here on the sim you can do only the first part of the test is not a big deal uh, basically it's always working on the sim forward panel brightness controls mid position instrument source select panel set navigation source switch off display control source switch off air data and attitude source switch off. Inboard display selector. MFD. FMC selector. Auto. Flight instruments. Check. Verify that the flight instrument indications are correct. Verify that only these flags are shown. To gas off, and. No V speed until takeoff V speeds are selected. Verify that the flight mode enunciations are correct. Auto throttle mode is blank, and roll mode is toga, and pitch mode is toga, and AFDS status is flight director. Okay, here we stop a little bit again. Uh, you have to check all your primary flight display and your navigation display, okay? Boeing is very specific telling you that uh, at this stage, you can see only two flags, which is tickets off, meaning that the traffic is on, but your tickets is still off. And the no V speeds until you have your V speed set on your FMC, okay? Everything else that is yellow is wrong. The only thing that you are still going to see yellow is the uh, altitude tape here, okay? But this is, this is also normal you're going to see on your approach and this tape becomes uh, white uh, from 500 to 1000 feet. This is to give you an indication of your height to the airdrome uh, reference elevation. Okay, so it is very specific also about your FMA, your flight mode denunciators with blank toga toga and flight director. Uh, but you need to check everything, including that your ground speed is zero, including your current heading, okay? And you want to make sure that this heading matches 
this heading here even though here is track as you are stopped the track and the heading they have to match so 096 on the tracking 096 on the heading uh, make sure that this is not the correct heading. this is your heading selector okay so this is on 096 uh, we are not working on this yet okay so you do not care about what is written here what you care about is where your heading is and it has to match the track okay in this case uh, zero nine uh, five is going to be for our departure okay so we were going to see something like this at this stage okay also the zero nine six is not only between the track and the heading on your side it's also between your compass and also the track and the heading on the captain side and also the heading on your instrument a standby instruments okay so all the headings they need to match and in this case they match we are on the heading 096 also if you have already something on your flight plan you want to see your first waypoint here and the distance for that waypoint uh, also you want to see your rnp and your anp here at the bottom and also if you turn on the VOR switches uh, you want to see which VOR is uh, selected by the airplane right now on the primary flight display the same thing your elapsed time if you have uh, the digital uh, clock it needs to be zero your ground speed zero and your indicated airspeed at 30 you're going to see if you have a lot of wind uh, especially headwind you are going to see that this may indicate something but then you need to know that the reason is the wind if that is the case uh, you don't really care about the speed that is set here right now but maybe you have your v2 or close to something like this and also your initial altitude but what is important is that it doesn't matter what is selected what matter is that those selections they represent whatever you have on your autopilot so 200 0, 9, 5, and 10,000 you are going to see 200 0, 9, 5, and 10,000 here also if you have the correct altimeter setting you will have uh, the airport elevation showing on your altitude display and also you want your vertical uh, speed indicator as zero because you're not going up or down your radio altimeter is usually around four it can be slightly different but usually is around four and you also want to see that as the flight director is on you have the flight director guidance on your pfd as well also one more time if you have the digital chronometer you are going to see the utc time here something that i didn't take into consideration because the new airplanes they all have the digital chronometer but if you still have the analog if you still have the old one the clock will be here on the right side okay so these indications for the time and the elapsed time they will be on your clock itself okay so you want to make sure everything is in place and it's very common very very common and it's very easy to notice uh, when the pilots they didn't do this procedure properly because later on when they are doing the pre-flight checklist where it states flight instruments with heading and altimeter uh, then you notice that this is the first time that the guys are going to check uh, the heading and the altimeter itself and to check the altimeter especially related to the other side and the standbys okay so uh, usually if the first officer calls flight instruments uh, and then uh, the captain starts oh heading is uh, this and that and he's looking on his side and also checking on the first officer side and also checking on the compass this is already too late you were supposed to do it during your pre-flight okay because maybe you didn't catch an error and now you have a big problem because you are close to your departure time and you still uh, didn't check uh, your flight instruments properly it's the same with the altimeter when they go oh, altimeter one zero to five reading uh, 2470 that's not the time to say what is your altimeter reading that's the time just to cross check your altimeter reference and the reading itself was supposed to be checked during uh, the point and during the phase that we are right now which 
is the beginning of the pre-flight procedure okay so let's continue with our procedure from now on landing gear panel set verify that the ground proximity light is extinguished flap over hide switch off gear over hide switch off terrain over hide switch off landing gear lever down alternate gear switch guard closed auto brake selector rto verify that the memo auto brake rto message is shown icas display check verify that the primary engine indications show existing conditions verify that no exceed ants is shown mfd check secondary engine display check Verify that the secondary engine indications show existing conditions. Verify that no exceed ants is shown. Status display. Check. Verify the status messages. Check Lissy display. Check. Resets. Select. Reset all. Select. Center display control source switch. Off. Center panel brightness controls mid position left radio tuning panel set verify that the off light is extinguished weather radar panel set select the radar mode tilt and gain as needed center radio tuning panel set verify that the off light is extinguished set or verify data is enunciated in the active frequency window Observer's audio control panel. As needed. Flight deck door panel. Auto. Observer audio selector. Normal. Engine fire panel. Set. Verify that the engine bottle 1 discharge and engine bottle 2 discharge lights are extinguished. Engine fire switches. In. Verify that the left and right fire warning lights are extinguished. Center CDU. Set. Flight deck printer. Set. Right radio tuning panel. Set. Verify that the off light is extinguished. First officer's audio control panel. As needed. ATC and gas panel. Set. Transponder system selector. As needed. Altitude source. Normal. Transponder mode selector. Standby. Evacuation command switch. Guard closed. Floor light switch. As needed. I'll stand panel light control. Mid position. I'll stand flood light control. Mid position. Seat, rudder pedals, seat belt and shoulder harness. Adjust. Okay, so the pre-flight procedure for the first officer ends up uh, with the FO uh, checking the seat position, also the seat belts, the shoulder harness, and the rudder pedals distance. Okay, uh, so now uh, that the first officer finished all the procedure, uh, he is going to wait for the captain to call for the pre flight checklist itself. Okay, so the first officer uh, at this point wait and wait for the captain commands to do uh, the pre-flight checklist that it will happen uh, once the captain finish his pre-flight procedure usually in real life the captain already finished his pre-flight procedure and he is actually waiting for the FO to finish the pre-flight because the FO has more things to do during the pre-flight. You're going to see the next video, the pre-flight for the captain. It's really short and that is because the captain has other things to worry about and other things to coordinate because at this stage, maybe you're going to have uh, the boarding starting. Uh, you are going to see uh, that the airport plane is being refueled, the, the cargo uh, is being loaded and everything else that is working okay uh, so that the captain uh, the crew itself they need to be aware but who is going to deal with all of these who is going to give the command to the people is the captain so 
that's why Boeing uh, made the pre-flight uh, procedures for the captain uh, really short so the captain can concentrate and have an overall picture of the flight so uh, once the captain noticed that the first officer finished his pre-flight usually the captains call for the pre-flight checklist and that's something that we are going uh, to do on our next video when we talk about the pre-flight but from the captain's perspective okay so i hope you like this video and if you like give the thumbs up subscribe to this channel share this video with your friends and i see you next time bye bye